Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Smart Money. The big headline in the last one week was market regulator SEBI looking to clamp down on influencer collaborations with regulated entities. SEBI in a consultation paper proposed that regulated intermediaries should disassociate themselves from unregistered financial influencers. Before we start, uh, if we take up this conversation forward, my colleague Yash is here with us in the studio to explain what exactly does the SEBI's draft consultation paper on influencers talk about and what the implications could be. Yash, over to you. Well, Sonia, while scrolling, let's say Instagram, YouTube or any other social media platforms, how often have you come across videos either recommending stocks, mutual funds, IPOs or any other financial services products? The problem is more often than not, these recommendations come from unregistered entities or as they are popularly called Finfluencers. SEBI has released its consultation paper on the association between registered entities and these unregistered Finfluencers. Public comments have been sought on this consultation paper by September 15th. Now the objective is very simple, reducing the association between SEBI registered and unregistered Finfluencers and by doing that, disrupt the revenue model for these unregistered influencers. First, let's look at the ways in which these unregistered influencers benefit. This can be through various ways, like referral fee for usage of the product, platform or services. There can be non-cash benefits like free usage of products or services or compensation received from the slow social media platform itself or even by profit sharing with the product channel or the service. SEBI in its consultation paper has said that no SEBI registered entity will have association with unregistered influencers. This covers all monetary as well as non-monetary association, all agents and representatives of the registered entities and all promotions of products and services. SEBI has also said that no registered entities shall uh, uh, share any sort of client information with any unregistered influencer. Also, SEBI registered entities shall not pay any sort of referral fees based on trailing commission basis. There are recommendations for registered influencers as well like display of registration, contact details, investor grievance helpline and all appropriate disclosure. Now let's talk about the misses which uh, will be a bigger challenge uh, to my understanding for SEBI. Uh, SEBI's consultation paper does not say anything, let's say on unregistered influencers promoting financial content for their own benefit. Also, does not say anything on uh, influencers promoting financial content on behalf of another uh, uh, unregulated entity. Let's hope that these misses also get addressed in times to come. Okay, Yash, thanks a lot for that. Let's now connect with our guest today. We speak to Vivek Bajaj of StockEd and Anushka Rathod, a finance content creator, joins in as well. She has over 1 million followers on social media. So let's find out, uh, you know, uh, what is kind of the best way to approach this and what is a workable solution in order to let both industries thrive. So let's try and get into the depths of it. Um, Vivek, let me start with you first, right? There is so much debate that's happened about this, but let's first try and assess the influencer market. How big is the market currently? What is the kind of business potential? And what's your best guess on how things may shape up? Uh, I think uh, influencer marketing has become a very important part of the global business growth. And if you if you see the numbers, uh, which is highlighted on the screen as well, uh, it, not just in India, but globally, it has reached uh, an uh, absolutely amazing numbers. And last five years, I've seen more and more growth of influencers coming to the system and leading to value addition to the businesses who have appointed them to market them. Now, in India, talking about BFSI, you know, the overall pie, if you see, almost 10% of influencer marketing is attributable to BFSI and the finance sector. So I think um, from a future perspective, this is a very important platform for companies to come and showcase their product and services. So we cannot deny their role and existence. But definitely, financial market is a very different kind of a uh, platform where there, it is all about money, which is involved. So having a regulated framework for financial market influencer will actually cool down a lot of uh, irregular practices which is happening in the industry right now. Okay, so cooling off of irregular practices, I think, is the... Uh, you know, is the main in, um, sort of uh, intention that SEBI has, right? <clears throat> Fair enough. Anushka Rathod is also with us. Anushka, you have uh, over 1 million followers across social media platforms and you do understand that with great reach 
comes great power and with great power comes great responsibility, right? And I think what SEBI is trying to do is to ensure that this power that you folks have is used responsibly. But what are your thoughts on what the consultation paper has suggested? I think as, you know, influencers and especially the influencers that I am around, we all really welcome uh, the consultation paper that is there and the guidelines that have been suggested. Because today what is happening is that there are a lot of uh, creators on uh, social media platforms who are giving direct advice or showing their own portfolios and influencing people or nudging people to uh, take specific positions or invest in specific products and uh, some in some cases even taking money to promote something and not disclosing it and those products may not always be in the best interest of that audience. So today what is happening is that all of us are being, you know, clubbed together and put in the same basket of influencers. But if you go and you see our content, from day one, we have not been, you know, even talking about stocks. We are not talking about specific mutual funds. We are not asking people to invest in specific products. Ours is a more general education-based uh, content and we are creating content on personal finance. We are not stock market creators. So the entire consultation paper that's come and, you know, us not being allowed to work work with SEBI registered platforms that already didn't happen for us because we didn't make that kind of content. So this is actually, SEBI has got it bang on. This is going to stop uh, the unscrupulous activities that were happening. This is going to stop, you know, uh, all the misleading that was happening for the retail audience. And this is, we definitely welcome this because this will help us segregate, you know, the kind of uh, creators we are from, you know, the broader market where they're sharing screenshots and misleading people. Absolutely, absolutely. I take your point. Uh, Vivek, come in on this. Uh, what exactly has uh, SEBI proposed since the market is growing at a really fast pace, right? And as Anushka was also pointing out, you can't paint everyone with the same brush. There are people who are doing uh, a lot of good things in terms of personal finance, uh, investor education, promoting financial literacy. And this over-regulation may sort of just work against this, right? Uh, your yeah. thoughts? Well, uh, SEBI is not asking not to continue doing that. If you are promoting financial literacy, if you are educating people, sure, you can very well do that. What concern SEBI has is a regulated entity is having a commercial relationship with these influencers and those commercial relationship is not defined as per the spirit of the law. Please try to understand. Uh, I'll give you a, a case a, a example that uh, any influencer who is showing a profit screenshot on a social media platform and uh, making other people believe that the person is profitable and then um, giving a lead, uh, lead link to open an account with a broker and then people open an account with a broker and there is a revenue sharing which is happening with that influencer. Now, technically, there is no law defining this. But yes, there was a law, which was a sub-broker law or authorized person law, which clearly mentioned that if you want to do a brokerage revenue sharing with any broker, you need to become an authorized person. And you can only tag yourself to only one broker. So there was a gray area. And some people have taken, um, um, you know, misutilized this gray area by becoming affiliate of multiple brokers. So what Sebi is saying that if you want to make trail income or brokerage income from a broker, you become the authorized person of that broker mm -hmm. and then promote that broker. No one is stopping you to educate. No one is stopping you to earn brokerage earning. What SEBI is saying, there was no law, there was no framework. Now we want to design a framework. So now you also know that when things go out of hand, frameworks design becomes much more complicated. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what is going to happen here. That because the framework was not done earlier, now everything is looking so bad that SEBI want to go to an extreme level mm. of, uh, you know, controlling them or uh, disconnecting them totally from the financial ecosystem. That, I think, is probably slightly overgone. Oh, absolutely. I mean, okay, I take your point on this trail-based commission or recurring income, right, that SEBI is sort of trying to control. And uh, this is in order to prevent fraudulent practices and to not uh, sort of, uh, you know, there are innocent investors who become very gullible with a lot of these uh, advertisements, etc. But Anushka, come in on this, the fact that unregulated entities like influencers may not be allowed to work with regulated entities, does that disrupt your business or your, your model in any way? So coming back to, you know, what I mentioned before also, there are different buckets of uh, creators of influencers. 
there are stock market based creators and there are personal finance creators i lie in the personal finance creator category and i work with say probably 100 brands today and out of that over the last 3 years probably 3 or 4 of them were semi registered from day one like when we started making content i was clear that i do not want to talk about specific mutual funds or stocks it was very easy to do it it's not very difficult to take names of five stocks because that gets the most amount of views also but from day one we had or i was sure that i didn't want to take that path and i wanted to focus on general education of course i got a lot of nudges from you know people in the industry to talk about those things get those affiliate income but i understood that you know some level this was not correct and it's also something that i didn't want to pursue so today for our business models especially personal finance creators this probably you know affects our business model or like our revenue i would say Uh, of around say three to four percent on an annual basis, but nothing more than that because we've been self-regulating from day one. But then when it comes to stock market creators, you know, especially a lot of majority of them are from uh, YouTube. They have been talking about specific stocks, even when they're not recommending. They are showing their own personal portfolios, and when people see that they've invested lakhs and lakhs of rupees, they get uh, incentivized to invest. Sometimes the screenshots and or the images that they're showing, they might not be hundred percent correct. So for in these cases, where you know now that Sebi said that they can't earn affiliate income, their revenue sources become uh, less. In fact, you know there have been some numbers which have heard from. from people talking in the industry only that there are individual creators who are earning 6 7 8 crores monthly just from these affiliate incomes so these uh, this regulation and ensuring that you know the consultation paper what it discusses that they can't affiliate with sebi registered entities will actually affect their business model but it is in the benefit of the retail investors and it will affect them to or it will incentivize them or not incentivize actually mandate them to create uh, content or to be more retail investor um friendly or you know keep their interest in mind okay since you spoke about how you've worked with so many brands right i mean 50 100 brands over the course of the last 3 4 years uh, how much have you been doing content uh, where do you see um the uh, you know the scope for this industry i mean the personal finance content creation space has become huge it's blown up in the last 1 to 2 years what kind of growth what kind of opportunity do you see here Right. So I think one major shift that has happened is that over the past two three years, we initially started with a lot of startups that were coming to advertise. But now even traditional finance has seen uh, the scope of this industry, and you know the that we have our audience's attention, and they can also use our platform to advertise. So personal finance, I don't think it's going to you know get hampered because of this consultation paper and. we work with a lot of utility based uh, companies or uh, utility based fintech companies uh, traditional banks we work with uh, you know platforms which generally just want to create awareness these are arms you know of again banks or insurance companies or credit card companies so all that is you know actually uh, increasing and we i have you know in the last 3 4 months uh my portfolio initially or you know my uh, brand portfolio was somewhere around 20% traditional finance and 80% startup so that has now changed to 80% traditional wow. uh, finance companies and 20% startup so i think the market has grown deeper more players have come into it and more traditional credible players are coming into it so i think we are here for the long run this industry is here that says a lot right vivek i mean uh folks like anushka and the whole host of others right they have a captive audience and traditional brands are also noticing that brick and mortar brands not just e-commerce platforms or not just startups right um so you can't uh, you can't sort of just wish this away even if sebi tries um this is a growing market that will be, sort of benefit everybody do you think this consultation paper will solve all the problems do you think there is some middle ground that can be achieved perhaps uh by saying that sony i think we are presuming that it's an extreme step with cbs taken mm-hmm. but obviously it's a strict measures they are proposed in this and it's a consulting paper so all of us have to give inputs so that the uh, the paper the final regulation becomes much more moderated my humble suggestion to all the uh, content creator is that there is no harm in uh, taking registration i mean it will only increase your credibility it will only increase the scope of your business you can do lot of things because finally content is getting commoditized 
monetization from the content is becoming difficult day by day because india has you know more than 2 3 million content creators these days right and every every week we have one new content creator coming in this in, the, in this particular domain of finance so my humble submission is that take a registration become an ra uh, become a safe, uh, maybe i'm free registered uh, um, uh, intermediary and follow certain compliance rules and work with all the intermediaries that's what sevi is saying that become a register intermediary and do whatever you want to do okay this question is for anushka anushka you know this sevi clamp down is more for influencers who are using their platform to get trail based and referral incomes right but do you think a different set of regulations is needed for influencers like yourself where your business model is largely dealing with brands uh, in the field of say personal finance and investor education definitely and it's not that we've not considered getting the existing registrations that are there but we don't want to get give, give direct advice uh, which these registrations are made for and these registrations don't work for our business models we want to be a platform for education where brands can come and advertise and we don't want to even direct uh, advertise direct products so in fact in the consultation paper that sebi has just come out with we are writing to them and we are explaining what our business models are and we are asking them you know to create a separate registration which might be an adaptation of existing regulations but it's more tailor made so that it is properly or it can accommodate our framework and we have a clear idea of what's black and what's white and instead of self regulating we have clear idea of what regulations or what rules we need to follow so we do need separate registration for influencers because the existing registrations don't actually fit into our business model anushka thank you so much for joining us and giving us your thoughts on this subject and all the best uh, you've been doing exceptionally well in this space of personal finance and uh, financial literacy um all the best continue doing that all right let's take a short commercial break on smart money don't go anywhere we'll be back in a bit welcome back to smart money we're talking about sebi's consultation paper on clamping down of influencers and more importantly a lot of the fraudulent activities that are happening uh, so sebi has of course put out this consultation paper we are in conversation with vivek bajaj of stock edge uh, vivek uh, before the break we were talking about how the sebi sebi is proposing regulating of of influencers right uh, but um, you know just to understand i mean this is a business which is vast as anushka yeah. was also telling us before the break they deal with almost 80 90 100 brands and uh, you know people have now realized what the power of social media influencing is uh, yeah. do you yeah. think that this will in any way put a hindrance to some of this brand marketing Uh, definitely any kind of regulation which gets added into the system is like a filter and uh, only selected few people who want to uh, walk that path they become uh, they become the kind of a service provider and that obviously stops or uh, kind of uh, it acts as an intermission to the big growth with this industry but you know influencing influencer ecosystem is not just about bfsi ultimately um, there will be a multiple domains where people will transact so people who are extremely focused they believe in the domain of financial market or personal finance they will stay and they won't mind uh, becoming part of the regulatory framework you know just to give you some data perspective it's a market which is going to reach 22 billion rupee by 2025 it's a big market definitely and bfsi becomes an important part of that market but will this regulation um, uh, uh, degrow this no the answer is no this will still be relevant for the growth of our ecosystem but definitely last 5 years has seen all kind of people coming in here without any respect for the spirit of the regulation i think they will move out of the system I think self regulation is also important right as Anushka was pointing out I mean you can take that call of how much you want to put out there and uh, you know what the advertisement should look like in that context you said what 2200 crores is the size of this market by 2025 is it yeah 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 okay and where does what does it stand at currently uh i i don't have exact number uh, handy right now because the report which i got from uh, uh, from a booking firm report uh, it, it did mention there's around 22 billion rupee by 2025 so uh, my guess is it should be we should have been probably half of that right now okay so that's a big growth that we're expecting in this industry yeah. 
but you know sebi is also putting a, a, in place a lot of regulations for other industries right whether it's mutual yeah. funds whether it's for people starting new businesses as well tell us a little a little bit about that and how the industry has been reacting so uh, if you see the evolution of the regulatory framework so they used to be majorly a broker who was providing all services to the customer be it research or advisory or transaction platform now this traditional broker setup is getting disintegrated and now we have transaction platform offered by discount brokers who believe to be providing a much more specialized uh, platform then research analysis what a broker used to do now there are independent research firms uh, with a license ra in india there are approximately 900 950 ra unfortunately that number has not grown also uh, then we have investment advisors uh, people who can just advise to the client and they cannot take the responsibility of transaction that number could would be around say 1200 or investment advisors and then as you grow as you become big uh, you launch your own pms or you eventually launch your own ais the real problem in uh, right structure beyond mutual fund is for the customer base who want to invest anywhere between say 1 lakh to 25 lakh what is the right structure for that kind of an audience is a big question mark sure there is a there is a small case which is uh, helping people to direct their invest in equity but that is again a broking structure been used to transact if i want to give a unbiased very neutral advisory uh, is that the right structure or not and how much is okay to be regulated these are some gray areas where still uh, i think the industry is evolving i mean one of the paper which came along with this was the payment mechanism uh, i don't know whether you can got a chance to look at that uh, white paper that paper is quite scary i mean what regulator is saying that because we want everyone to only deal with a regulated entity uh, the inra specifically we want payment to be collected by a sebi authorized entity and that entity will eventually release the payment to ia and ra mm. so this is i mean i i am finding this to go to a level which practically adds layers of restrictions in doing business as well as from a user perspective it becomes so a uh, non user friendly exercise where i will go here then i'll make payment here then the payment will come this is not at all in sync to what probably the regulator ultimately wants to achieve all right vivek appreciate your thoughts here on cnbc tv 18 as always thanks a lot for joining us and hopefully sebi will take all this advice into consideration and come out with a more balanced approach where the industry thrives and fraudulent practices are prevented thanks a lot for joining in well with that it is a wrap on this edition of smart money thanks for watching